I will not buy this laptop and I won't recommend it to you because this laptop is actually not meant for the average user but this laptop is certainly designed for a specific market and I'll tell you what you need to know about this laptop here on Rank Reviews I have here the ASUS ExpertBook B9450F an 890 grams of ultra lightweight laptop that I fell in love with but was shocked at the price tag of this really slim form factor I explained who this laptop is for, but let's take a quick look at what this laptop means for the future of Intel computers. Let's start with Intel's Project Athena. Basically, it is a de facto standard for thin and light laptops. Companies like Asus must demonstrate that the laptop isn't just a pretty looking device. It must fulfill a strict checklist, which includes fast charging, minimum of 9 hour battery life, and Thunderbolt ports. Intel verifies all of this info by testing out the laptop themselves, which allows them to certify any particular model. This is very interesting to me as a reviewer because laptop manufacturers need to achieve Intel's requirements using the hardware and it means delivering multiple promises which I mentioned earlier. That begs the question, does this really deliver on the promises? Let's start with the exterior. This laptop is equipped with two Thunderbolt 3 ports which support USB power delivery that to me is such a welcome feature and I hope that it becomes a universal standard across all portable devices. And a one full size HDMI port, mini display port that can be connected to a gigabit ethernet adapter, one USB-A 3.0 port, audio jack and a Kensington lock. This laptop that also sent meets most of the requirements except for the battery life. Because this particular model has 33 kilowatt hours of battery life. From my testing and usage, mostly browsing on Chrome and writing this script in Google Docs. I get about 4 to 6 hours of battery life, far below Project Athena's requirement of 9 hours. But ASUS actually has two expert book models. This is the third. They have double the battery life, 66 kilowatt hour battery. And this just based on my usage. So if it's 4 to 6 hours, I believe the other two models will live up to the 9 hour battery life spec. On top of that, my favorite feature of this laptop is fast charging. It, it took a while, but laptops are finally adopting this standard. So how fast does this laptop charge then? From my testing, I managed to go from 0% to 50% in 30 minutes and one hour gives me about 85%. So yeah, so far this laptop is actually living up to its claim of battery fame. So when you're a busy worker that's moving from meetings to meetings, this laptop will last you that long. And when you get the opportunity to charge it 30 minutes, going to promise four hours of battery life. The good doesn't stop there. The keyboard is very comfortable to type on and I usually prefer mechanical keyboards. The scissor switches don't really wobble too much so I can really type quickly on this and not feel lethargic, especially if I'm writing for long periods of time. The backlight is good on this design and from testing ASUS's previous backlights before, this one is way better than the UM433D which I reviewed somewhere up here. This one though, the light shines through and illuminates the keys and each alphabet well, so that's great if you're working in low light environments. The trackpad below uses Microsoft's precision drivers, and for me, it's good enough that I don't need to bring mouse out. And this is coming from someone that really loves using the gold standard MacBook Air, MacBook Pro trackpads. The screen is 1080p matte finish, very sharp, and I can see the text clearly, especially when I'm reading scripts or reading articles. And there's a reason why I would not benchmark this laptop, not even benchmark it even if like I'm supposed to because it wouldn't be a fair comparison to look at just specs to cost ratio. This laptop is aimed at businesses, startups to SMEs. The specs inside are really basic. The one I have is equipped with an Intel i7 processor that's still on the older generation of nanometer, 40 nanometer. While there's 16 gigs of RAM, plenty and appreciated. Two SSD PCIe, really fast one, upgradable and replaceable if anything does happen, and there's no discrete graphic cards, just Intel's one. So it's quite mediocre in that sense, and it cost $2,700. Yes, that amount of money can actually get you a really powerful gaming desktop or a lightweight gaming laptop. And if you're wondering why there's a steep price tag, it's because ASUS is touting the business line of laptops as a service rather than a product. That means that they can opt to let customers pay about $60 per month and instead of spending a huge budget on IT equipment, they can segregate out their costs more efficiently. 
while retaining like the business side of customer service where it's reliability and instantaneous like uh, talk time with someone on ASUS to maybe fix a broken SSD or a faulty equipment. So in that sense, what you're paying for for $2,700 is beyond just the laptop itself. It's also a service. And you know what else is really amazing? Subscribing to this channel. Another cheesy segue, I know. So if you want as well, like, um, I usually buy coffee to stay up late to do these scripts and I buy it Kopi C Koso. So if you feel like you want to get me something nice, I guess, you can go to coffee.com. Actually, you know what? I have a link right here. You can take a look if you want. Uh, you can buy me coffee if you like. And if there's anything that you like to know on this laptop or something that you think is worth pointing out, leave it. Leave a comment down in the section below. Blah blah blah. English, do I even speak? And then like this video if you like it. The other button works fine if you don't. If you don't. So um, see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.